Hello and welcome to the fourth lecture on this course on chemical process design. This lecture will examine what has to be done to arrive at an initial mechanical design for a pressure vessel once the process simulation and process design has been completed. One key learning point is that sometimes the mechanical design may appear to look very different to the process design in terms of the number of process systems that have their own unique pressure vessel. In fact, this is a very good place to start. Go and get a cup of tea and let's look at an innovative example of a process that consists of multiple fixed catalyst beds operating at high temperature and high pressure, where equilibrium is attained, and where heat exchange between beds is used to change the position of equilibrium to allow further reaction to proceed. One process that corresponds to this is the ammonia process. So in high pressure processes, such as the Harbour-Bosch process, there's a strong desire to minimise the number of pressure vessels operating at high pressure due to very sound safety reasons. So good mechanical design of the chemical process and innovative mechanical design of the chemical process can allow this to happen. Let's start by looking at the basic process design for an ammonia synthesis reactor. So here on my whiteboard is a screenshot from a Unisim flow sheet. Let's start at the top left and walk the process route. So we've got compressed hydrogen and nitrogen coming in. We've got a heat exchanger, which preheats that hydrogen and nitrogen to reactor conditions. We've got our first packed bed, our 501, where our synthesis takes place and the reaction is exothermic. And so the temperature leaving R501 is in equilibrium with the concentration of species. So that limits how much reaction we can do in this first pack bed. So what we're going to do is to drop the temperature and therefore the concentration of species will no longer be in equilibrium with the temperature. And so we have a second heat exchanger, which is an intercooler. We cool the reaction mixture down and we react in a further packed bed. Then, depending on the exit temperature from R503, we may elect again to cool the um, effluent down to ensure that the chemical species are no longer in equilibrium with the temperature, and then have a final packed bed to attain our final desired conversion. So we've got a heat exchanger, a preheater, a packed bed, another heat exchanger, an intercooler, a further packed bed, a further heat exchanger, which is another intercooler, and then a final packed bed. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six different systems in this very basic process design. This is not how we would actually build a design in reality, because there's heat that we can meaningfully use from the exits of each of these packed beds to perform heating duties. This type of flow sheet would be very useful, perhaps, to see what the overall energy requirements might be and what the likely concentration of species could be at the end of such a system. So we're going to evolve the process design. Here is that evolution. Let's again walk the process route. Starting top left, we've got our compressed nitrogen and hydrogen going through a heat exchanger. That heat exchanger takes some stream that we'll look at in a minute as the hot utility. It heats the reaction mixture up and there's a second heat exchanger which again starts to heat that reaction mixture up to reactor temperature. And again, if we look at that heat exchanger, we can see that there is another hot stream being used as a utility. So we go into the first packed bed, R501. At the exit of R501, the temperature of the reacting mixture is hot and we need to cool it down, otherwise we're not going to be able to proceed with the reaction any further because equilibrium has been attained. So that second feed preheater also serves as a reaction product cooler because we're taking heat from the reaction products and using that to preheat the reaction feedstock. So we've got some heat integration there. And so by the time the reactor effluent from R501 has been through this heat exchanger, it is not in equilibrium anymore. And so we can go into a second packed bed and proceed with the chemical reaction. Then we can go into a third packed bed. I've omitted the intercooler between these two beds. And then we have our desired conversion at the end of R503. What we're then going to do is to extract some useful heat from this. So we might boil some water with it and produce steam. And high pressure steam is an incredibly useful utility around plant. And we may have enough heat left also to serve as feed preheat. And so if we look at where this product stream goes, after the boiler feed water boiler, 
it goes into that second heat exchanger, which was the first heat exchanger that we encountered when we started to follow the process route. And so again, this is an example of heat integration where hot reactor effluent is used to preheat cold reactor feed. There's a final step of heat exchange included on this diagram, which is simply cooling the uh, ammonia product down a little bit further using cooling water. So if we consider these heat exchangers that are pertinent to this process, we've got the two feed preheaters. We've then got some unit operations that involve packed beds. So we've got three packed beds and we've got some other ancillary heat exchangers. So we've got up to three, seven different process systems in this particular design. OK, so that's what things might look like in the process simulator. And you might be thinking, right, well, in terms of high pressure pressure vessels, we may have seven different high pressure pressure vessels. Nah, that is not how you would build it in reality. There's a strong driver to keep your high pressure systems to an absolute minimum for safety reasons. And when we talk about pressure safety and explosion energies, we'll see exactly why. So let's look at a very neat mechanical design for a chemical system such as this. So here on my whiteboard is a picture from a patent, a patent from 1986. It's a US patent, US 4696799, and you can go and look that up. And what we have here is a single pressure vessel that incorporates one, two, three, four, five, six, effectively seven different unit operations. So let's walk through the route and see what those seven operations are. We start with cold feed coming into our reactor and our cold feed goes around an outer annular shell whereupon it picks up a little bit of heat from all the packed beds. And we can see the blue arrows go to purple, go to sort of light red, indicating the feed heating up. So we have effectively an annulus. We have a core of this um, reacting system, which contains our packed beds and a few other bits of kit. But then we have a gap between that and the pressure vessel itself. And it is through that annular gap that the first stage of preheat actually occurs. Then what we do is we do some more preheat. So we feed our now slightly warm reaction mixture past some packed beds again and through to a shell and tube heat exchanger that is built in to this pressure vessel. And there we go. There is our reactant going through our shell and tube heat exchanger. After it's exited the first shell and tube heat exchanger, it then goes into a second shell and tube heat exchanger. And if we look at where these heat exchangers are placed, we can see that they are taking their heat from reaction effluents from the exit of the packed beds. This will become more apparent in a minute. So we've achieved, in effect, three stages of feed preheat. Feed preheat through the annular shell, feed preheat through our first tube bundle, feed preheat through our second tube bundle. Now we're at reactor temperature. And so we go through our first packed bed and we achieve equilibrium. We need to cool the, the gas down now so we can react further. And so we use that hot effluent as the hot fluid across the tube bundle that's achieving the final bit of feed preheat for the same packed bed. So then we go through the next packed bed and effectively have, we have the same thing going on. The reactor and mixture heats up and we get rid of that heat in that first tube bundle, which is the feed preheater for that packed bed. And then we go through two more packed beds before exiting that pressure vessel. So what we have here is a very, very neat and very, very innovative way to safely get a lot of process equipment in one pressure vessel. We've got four packed beds of catalyst. We've got two tube bundles for heat exchange. And you could argue the way this is assembled, we've also got that annular gap, which will also act as a concentric tube heat exchanger. So clever mechanical design, innovative mechanical design, innovative thinking, abstracted thinking can help to increase process safety greatly.